Hello everyone. Today we're going to look at the game between Gadakamski with the white pieces and Anish Giri with the black pieces. This game took uh, place in round five of the Beijing Grand Prix tournament in 2013. So the game started out E4 C5, Sicilian defense. And then we see this uh, Moscow variation. The Sicilian, the Bishop D7, Bishop takes Queen, takes D7, and C4. Um, now, uh, white strategy uh, is similar to that of the Marazzi bind, except that he was able to exchange the light square bishops, which uh, usually is a little bit, you know, of a um, nuisance in the Marazzi bind, with all the pawns being on uh, white squares, or at least the majority of the pawns being on light squares. Uh, sometimes it takes a while for uh, White's light square bishop to uh, get into the game. So here we see Komsky trading that bishop off immediately and then placing his pawns on the opposite color of the C1 bishop. So that's a little um, a jewel of strategy that you can uh, place in your pocket. All right, so the game continued. Knight f6, knight c3. Now g6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, bishop g7, f3, castles, and bishop e3. So there you have it. Uh, the light square bishop from white is gone. And it would normally be sitting on e2, blocked by these pawns on c4 and f3. So uh, in that respect, um, uh, Kamsky has done well with this particular strategy. All right. So the only thing is that it's it's cost him some time because he had to get the bishop out first and then trade it off, um, which of course helped uh, Black's development. Because remember, after playing bishop b5 check, bishop d7, and then Komsky traded off right away, he developed the queen uh, for white. Excuse me, for Black. All right. So therefore. Um, what Black's going to do, of course, is use this extra time that he has to, um, you know, fight for a counterplay. So um, Black's game is often going to be based around uh, activity, especially the fact that White's advantages consist of uh, more of static features. For instance, uh, more space. Right? You see his pawns occupy the first four ranks. He also uh, has uh, control of the center. All right. Uh, not only occupation of the, uh, the center with his uh, pieces, but also uh, control with the pawns. Okay, so he has control out of uh, over three of the four main squares in the center. Only um, uh, bl uh, square black can c make claim to is on e5. All right. So normally in these type of setups, black's counterplay consists of tearing down white center with moves like d5 at some point which have to of course be prepared by um, e6 and then blowing up the center with d5 another strategy is a6 and b5 which are very important um, ideas so as the game uh, moves along let's keep these things in mind so rook c8 b3 a6, rook c1, knight c6, and now a4. And again, this is where um, time is very important in chess of Tempe. Um, now, of course, black, excuse me, white would just love to just be able to castle here, get his king into safety. All right, but he has to worry about this threat of b5, the counterplay. Okay. So Komsky plays a4. Now e6. Now he castles. And d5. So he didn't get the b5 break in, but he got d5 in. Knight takes c6. B takes c6 was played. And now a5. Okay. Q4. 
queen e7. And one thing I want to point out too is um <clears throat> I was uh, explaining how Kamsky had all his pawns uh, on light squares. So most of them, you know, um, which accentuated the activity of this of his bishop. Notice Geary has done the same thing. All of his pawns are on light squares. Okay, which makes this bishop very strong. Here Kamsky plays knight a4. Uh, he's playing very ambitiously here with a slight advantage. Now, I'm sorry, uh, he's playing very ambitious, ambitiously without the slightest of advantage. This game is um, as equal as can be. And uh, here, he's not so much going for a fork, so to speak. I mean, it's too obvious. But um, more of less taking control and possessing uh, the square of b6 in the uh, black territory. Okay. So here, he plays knight a4. Okay, so he's gonna he's trying to go for a little more in the position. If he just takes here, he takes c, takes d5, knight a4. Rook c6, queen e2, rook d8, bishop b6, and rook d c8. Then the game is just equal. Okay, so Kavsky goes for a little more here. So he plays knight a4 right away. D takes e4. And now knight b6. Is he winning anything? No, because the rook just plays uh, to d8. Attacking the queen. Queen goes to e2. If queen c2... Then rook a b8, f takes e4, knight g4 attacking that bishop, bishop f4, bishop d4 check, king h1, and now e5 is uh, very good for black. If not almost winning. So Kowski plays uh, queen e2, rook a b8. And then now uh, king h1. Uh, this shows that something is obviously uh, went wrong in uh, White's position because, all right, he sacrificed a pawn, but it, there doesn't seem any way uh, for him to show that he has compensation for it. So King H1 is just uh, almost like throwing your hands up and figuring like, okay, I made a mistake here. If, if White plays F takes E4, then just simply Knight takes E4. Bishop f4, knight c3, queen f3, e5, queen e3, and the pawn just marches forward. Rook takes, bishop d4, queen takes d4, rook takes d4, bishop takes b8, and rook d3. And black is just better. Again, there's no compensation. If bishop f4 here, attacking the rook right away, then e5, bishop g5, queen c5, check. King h1 followed by queen takes a5. So these two continuations look pretty bad for white. And king h1 is just basically uh, kind of admitting to some type of faulty strategy here. So e takes f3. Rook takes f3. So uh, Komsky is just down a pawn here. And now knight g4. Bishop g1 and knight e5. Komsky plays rook f1. And here he's he's pretty much lost here at this point. No compensation for the pawn whatsoever. If he tried to get aggressive, say with rook g3, then just queen a3, rook b1, queen b4, h3, h5 is good enough. So rook f1 was played, c5, b4. And so now, of course, being the veteran player that he is, um, Kamsky realizing that he's in trouble, so he's just trying to create complications. And the idea with this move is um, to create a pass pawn and push this pawn up the board. Okay. So he plays... Uh, B4. Uh, alternative knight A4. Rook takes B3. Knight C5. Rook goes back. Knight takes A6. Rook A8. C5. And Queen B7. Again, it's not enough for white. 
So he plays b4 straight away. C takes, and now he pushes the pawn. C5. Queen b7. Knight d3 was pretty strong also. So for example, rook c4, then b3, c6, and queen c7 blocking the pawn. Queen b7 is played. And rook f d1. And now knight c6. So this is a great square to blockade from. Um, knight, the knight is definitely the best blockader. So not only is it hindering the advance of the c5 pawn, it's also attacking the pawn on uh, a5. All right. And then when it needs to, the knight can always hop back in the center. So that's why the knight is a great uh, blockading piece. Queen f3. Queen c7. Kamsky plays h3. Again, not really having any, anything to do. Bishop e5. Queen b3. Rook takes, rook takes. And now rook d8. Rook f1. And now knight d4. Okay. So now, although white is trying to keep um, some pieces on the board by um, avoiding the exchange of rooks, um, you know, he's uh, just two pawns down, basically. So um, it's really, it's really um, you know, hard to find any good solutions here. Even if uh, queen takes b4, this knight is just going to go to f5 here. And you have this threat here. So queen takes b4 was played, knight f5. The rook came to b1. Alright. Knight g3 check. King h2. And now Gary plays bishop d4. Okay. Um, I know some of you are looking at discovered checks as I am. Also, um... Maybe knight f1, but after knight f1, king h1, perhaps rook d3 or bishop c3. So it's hard to see something concrete there with the with the discovery check, discovery check. So Gary's clear plan is to just exchange off this bishop right here. All right. Okay, not only does this bishop get exchanged off, but the c5 pawn loses its, uh, its uh, main defender. So bishop takes, rook takes. And of course, the, the uh, rook cannot be captured. Well, it can be, but it would cost too much for white. So knight f5 check would be played, and then... That's how the game will end right there. So after rook takes d4, queen e1, and now knight e4. Another option is knight f1, but you never know what the time scenario was there. So he's playing like this more solid move. So knight e4 is played king h1, queen takes c5. Rook came out to c1. Queen to g5, king g1, and king g7, and white seems to just be shuffling around, there's really not too much to do, so he's just hoping kind of for a miracle here, and Gary is just playing very solid, knight d2, king h1, and then he finds a nice combination here, plays rook takes h3, and Kamsky, uh resigns right there. The reason why is because after g takes h3, then queen d5 check, which forces the king to move one square over. And now I'm sure all of you can see the uh, final um, move that black would make here. Simple fork of the king and queen. And like I always say, no matter how layered these combinations are, they will always end with the... Um, 
most uh, simple, uh, simplistic uh, moves at the end, right? You just have to be able to see through the layers. So the fact is, after King H1, the hard move to find is this Rook takes H3, and once you see that, then you can you can easily find the um, the final move in the combination. So not the most exciting game, but nice solid game. Um, from Anish Giri and again a good start from Kamsky like I like the idea of him kind of getting rid of that bishop in the Maroxy bind and then playing a Maroxy bind um, so that's a, a, a decent strategy he just um, was a little bit over ambitious uh, in the position with this idea of knight a5 uh, that he went, that he pursued, uh, excuse me, knight a4 and knight b6 that he pursued later on. He probably should have just um, played e takes and just kept the position uh, real solid and probably uh, pursued, you know, something in this line at some later date. So that's all for now. Um, we'll be posting videos daily um, on different topics. So uh, stick around and check all the links below. Please donate, support my channel, um, and also check the links for products related to this opening uh, in discussion. All right, I'll see you guys on the next video.